Great. So welcome to the first episode in our new webinar series on the edge with LF edge. My name is Jill and I'm with the Linux Foundation and work specifically with the LF edge project. Today, we are pleased to kick off the series with a discussion on your path to edge computing with the Crano edge stack. Our community experts, Condon Cothervel, uh, the Crano Technical Steering Committee Chair and Tapio Tagren, Community Subcommittee Chair are going to be presenting today. Just a couple of ground rules before we get started. Um, all of our participants are on mute, but the Q&A window is gonna be open throughout the webinar. So if you have any questions that come up, please feel free to type them as they come as you think of them. Um, but our presenters are going to be ho holding on addressing those questions until after the formal presentation. So thank you all for joining. Um, let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and kick things off uh, and turn the mic over to Condon. Thank you, Jill, and uh, welcome everyone. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, your path to edge computing with the Crino Edge Stack. So the presentation is divided into three parts. Uh, so we're going to give an introduction into a Crino Edge Stack. We will talk about uh, what we do and what it consists of. Then we would also talk about uh, the latest release of a Crino Edge Stack. We'll talk about the blueprints and we would uh, discuss what, is, what are those blueprints are. Then we would talk about uh, the details about how we test the blueprints and the what release mechanism that we actually ensure to ensure the quality of the blueprints. Uh, so that would be the third part. Then as Jill pointed out, we would uh, go into the Q&A and answering any questions that you may have. So with that, uh, let's get started. Let's go to the next slide. As we all know that the edge computing uh, it is required for the emerging application, which really requires a low latency uh, processing, also the connectivity. So when we talk about edge computing, it can come in several forms. You know, it can be deployed somewhere in a data center uh, closer to the user or a central office in the telco deployment, or it could be in a cell tower, or it could be in a home itself. So it comes in a different uh, size and the factors around the deployment. So when we talk about uh, data center deployment, you know, the complexity of data center deployment itself is heavy with a lower scale of uh, location. For example, data center deployment, if you take any public cloud or a cloud that are deployed in the telco location, usually they come in the size of, you know, 10 to hundreds, and it has never been more than 100 location. But with respect to edge computing, has to be closer to the user. That means that many number of edge location need to be deployed. When we try to deploy many number of location, it brings up a lot of complexity. You know, how do you make sure there is a coherent way of testing that particular stack that would get deployed in each edge location? And also the, the size and the factor of the deployment. For example, in the data center, the power cooling and the spacing is not a major issue. Usually you have a large space in a data center, you can deploy them in a large space and people usually deploy in 10,000s of computers uh, to support the workload. But in the edge computing, you know, we don't have that much uh, space and power and cooling in the edge location. Usually you need a smaller factor. It is not necessarily that every time it has to be a smaller deployment. For example, the telco data centers could actually have a larger space. But when we go closer to the you know, customer home or even the cell towers, we can clearly see that uh, you know, the space is very constrained. So it has to be in a different sizing. So that means that you, know, you do need to have uh, different varieties of you know, sizing for the edge computing, but you can't have uh, too much variation on the software side, then it, is, that is, it became complexity to maintain one software for home, one software for you know, deploying in a cell tower or in a central office or in a different location. So that's where our Crino looks at actually overall deployment model and, uh, and provide a solution irrespective of where you deploy an edge computing uh, instance, either it is a home, either it is actually in a cell tower or a central office or you know, you know, even in the data center. It provides that a particular view of you know, different deployment. So this is a graph you know, which is from uh, IHS and you can see that they have projected how much uh, ratio of edge computing is going to be deployed uh, in terms of over a period of time. But again, the key is actually the latency, but there are other factors plays into the role in this. For example, security. 
uh, you know, in some location, for example, if you take an industry, in industry, the people don't want to secure application to leave that industry location. And uh, it's not only latency, it's also the security aspect comes in. For example, you know, video processing, the image processing, that, that you don't want that to be leaving that location and processed in a centralized cloud. You want that to be local, local processed. Then in that case, you know, you do need this edge computing in place. So there is a different use case. The key points is that the use cases, you know, you have a wide varieties of use case. Then the deployment model varies depending upon where you deploy them, right? So that's a key point from this particular slide. So let's go to the next slide, please. Hey, hey, Candon, before we move on, we did have a question about um, the blue and gray colors of the boxes, if uh, what those mean, if anything. No, there is nothing specific in there. People trying to highlight actually, you know, different application here. So there is nothing specific about color on the slide. Great, thanks. Sure. And as I talked about a different, you know, deployment model, and this slide is to provide an overview. Again, this is not a full exhaustive list, but uh, we can clearly see what uh, the new applications that are emerging, uh, you know, in the industry. And primarily, these are going to be supported by either 4G or 5G and other ways of connectivity that the telcos are providing. But when we look at it, you know, the different varieties of application, they come in a different sizing, different deployment stuff, and they also have a different latency requirement, right? But mostly, if you look at all this application, they can be satisfied as long as the, the Edge Cloud platform is meant to uh, you know, support VMs or containers and hardware accelerations and microservices and connectivity to 5G, for example. And that way, you know, like the different varieties of application can be supported from a, a single edge cloud platform. So that's a key aspect of it because you can't build different edge cloud platform for each of this application, then the cost will actually really will be bigger. So what is this community does it, the Crino community does it, it's like it looks at holistically all the applications that are emerging and which are already in the industry as well. And look at all this, you know, enablers, uh, something like hardware acceleration, AI, microservices, 5G, and containerization, for example. And then it packages the solution in, the, in satisfying this particular application. So let's go to the next slide. So LFAGE is a collection of edge projects, and uh, Acrino is one of the projects in LFAGE. The reason for LFAGE was formed is to really have a cohesive way of supporting multiple projects. Again, why multiple projects? Why all cannot be in one? Because there are different varieties of factors need to be resolved in the industry. For example, Akrino is very focused on creating the edge stack and integrating them with the multiple upstream and downstream softwares. And likely you do need a different application as we were seeing on the previous slide. And you also need to have you know, different uh, sectors being addressed. For example, we have an industry, then enterprise and IoT and the telcos, and there are different sectors, application integration protocols, they all need to be integrated. So it's very hard for a single project to address, you know, all the needs of edge computing because it's a wide world. And that's where, you know, like we bring in multiple projects, but address in such a way that it provides you a very cohesive way of integration. That's what the LF edge is meant for. Today we are focusing on the Crino edge stack presentation, but there will be, as Jill was pointing out, there will be a webinar on other projects as well. So let's go to the next slide. So I just want to give you guys a highlight of, you know, what do we do and why, why we have this Acrino Edge Stack project. And the key mission statement is like uh, the opportunities and pain points that I talked about on the previous slide. The opportunity is that, you know, in order to deploy this edge location, you do need an end-to-end -end stack. For example, today, uh, uh, you know, you can go to Acrino, download an end-to-end -end stack for uh, edge computing. But before Acrino, you have to go to uh, OpenStack and download OpenStack, have to go to Kubernetes to download Kubernetes, then operating system, then multiple other softwares that you do need to bring in, and they are not packaged in a way to address a specific use case or requirement related to the edge computing. 
So that's what primarily a crino does is that it takes the use case, it takes the requirement, then put together the whole instance of, you know, different components that including hardware and do a testing and provides an end to end blueprint. And uh, likewise, you know, like it's also very important to have, you know, like a cohesive set of APIs and cohesive set of, you know, like end to end configuration among different components and work with upstream communities because if a, if a single user is trying to do this instead of community support, then they need to go to, you know, like the several communities to address a specific problem. For example, you have to fix something in Kubernetes versus OpenStack versus operating system. Then you have to go to each community. But when we have community, you know, people coming together actually to address something in that way, it is easy for a user in terms of, you know, like a, a cost reduction and also, you know, providing a cohesive solution that is pretty much, you know, like available for everyone. So our mission statement is actually spelled out here, as I stated, but again, the key goals are actually really building integrated solution for user deployment for edge use cases. That's what this community is really focused on. So let's go to the next slide. It is a robust community. Uh, we have about 40 plus companies contribute today. And uh, there is a 70 percentage of LFH members, premier members, they, uh, they participate in Talk Rhino. Uh, so we have companies and developers and people come from a different a part of the world, that including America, Asia, and, uh, and Europe as well. And we have contribution coming in. And uh, we have many blueprints that I'm going to talk about in a minute that, you know, what it does and how it is satisfying different deployment models. So let's go to the next slide. So I mentioned about the blueprint. I want to add more clarity for you guys about what is the blueprint itself and why do we have a blueprint? So usually people refer blueprints to a building, you know, diagrams and stuff like that. But here, you know, like we are referring to a, a, a descriptive configuration of a particular edge stack that including all the hardware, software, and configuration that need to go on to support that specific, uh, you know, the set of collections of tools. And uh, the way community address this particular blueprint in Akraino is like a use case base. So the requirement is very clearly articulated. So the community have developed a template in which they collect, you know, the specific requirements in each layer and how they are all come together. So it's a very well-defined template where the use case itself has been articulated. Then it talks about how this whole fully integration is going to work. The community has set up a very nice process around, you know, how do you integrate all these components and provide a full CI CD support. And community has like a proven test cases and proven methodology to test this particular blueprints. And then the community also provide the life cycle management of these blueprints. And the intention here is to really provide a production quality because that's where, you know, like a user would be able to download a, a specific blueprint and deploy them into their uh, environment to support a specific use case. The key goals of the blueprints, and that's what we satisfy, and that's what we have proven in the release one and release two is to provide a low cost, because when you, once, you, once you have everything integrated, that allows you to actually download and implement it instead of going to 10 places to download things. And it also supports a large scale. You know, we talked about, you know, the edge always be a large scale. And you do need to have uh, situations where zero touch provisioning and configuration management across large number of instances. That's where, you know, like the blueprints can, you know, uh, focus on as well. Also, the industry adoption, you know, if you have things in blueprints, you know, people start using them, then, you know, there is a feedback mechanism come in. So then the blueprints get enhanced and uh, it provides a very progressive way of, you know, the lifecycle management. So we also help in actually testing this in multiple varieties of hardware. And uh, Akraino has a, a specific lab uh, built and managed by the Linux Foundation under LFAG and the Rakrino, and where these blueprints are actually validated. We also encourage the, the blueprint owners and the users to maintain their own lab, which connects to the Akraino uh, Jenkins and pulls the code, installs it, and proves that the blueprint is working. Or if there is a problem, it's get reported to the community. So there is a loop, loop that uh, used to buy the community to ensure the quality of that particular blueprint. 
And again, in 2018, we launched this community. We have 24 blueprints uh, so far and eight feature projects. But again, these are all, uh, you, know, uh, you know, there are many blueprints on the way. So you can see this number actually grows up. But you can also think about why there are 24 blueprints. As I stated, you know, like there are multiple features and multiple, you know, deployments uh, required to support these different use cases. I will talk about that in the ne next few slides. Then you can understand, you know, how these blueprints are addressing a specific use cases. So let's go to the next slide. So what we have accomplished so far is as I mentioned, this community was formed in 2018. In a very short time frame, uh, R1 was released in June 2019. And in R1, we have uh, delivered multiple blueprints. In R2, we have uh, delivered multiple blueprints as well and providing support to the R1 blueprints uh, as a continuum. So this community has, you know, like uh, really shaped the process of all the CI, CD and integration around the blueprints. And that's a great work by this community. And uh, we also have an automated way of validating these blueprints. And uh, Tapio is on the call today and he's going to talk about that uh, because that is very key. Because when you, when you don't validate a blueprint from a specific layers, how they are integrated and stuff like that. So the validation testing comes in two form. One is like CI CD testing. Then there's also the conformance testing and security testing, which Adopia will talk about it today. So that allows that blueprint to be, you know, like a fully hardened and the providing a specific, you know, deployment in a very production quality way. And the community also has, you know, mature, maturing a blueprint from uh, one stage incubation stage uh, to the mature stage. And for the mature stage, you know, like the process is very aggressive and it's a very aggressive process that the TSC and the community follows. It ensures the quality of the blueprint in several ways. And uh, that's something Tapia is going to talk about as well. And we have actually conducted several hackathons and, uh, you know, meetups, but again, actually to educate people uh, what Akrino is doing. But the, the value is also demonstrated by, you know, delivering this production deployable blueprints uh, in R1 and R2. That's a great value that the Akrino community has done to this industry. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So I talked about uh, you know two uh, multiple use cases on the previous slide. Uh, to summarize into a you know big bucket of uh, use cases, Agrino focus on two specific areas of you know like two buckets of area I would say. And uh, one area is the telco based uh, uh, edge deployment. Uh, specifically, we talked about 20 milliseconds, and that's where the telco comes into the uh, deployment. So they actually has the first hop uh, from the user um, due to the connectivity that they provide from LTE, 5G, Wi-Fi, or wireline. And uh, uh, Akrino supports, you know, like a telco based use cases for deployment and support of, you know, mobility core, mobility RAN, and uh, providing, uh, you know, deployments and solution for that. And this slide is actually to uh, uh, mention that, you know, this community supports the telco based use cases. And we are trying to work closely with the Warren community as well to actually create the Warren based blueprint. Akrino release one and release two had, uh, uh, had a blueprints uh, to support uh, uh, mobility core and also the RAN related blueprints. Uh, let's go to the next slide. The other major piece is the enterprise and the enterprises comes in the different formats. Like, you know, you can see there are multiple industry uh, vectors that are, uh, and comes under the enterprise. So Akrino supports, you know, like a different varieties of enterprise uh, blueprints and, uh, and providing a deployment model for them. And uh, those are the, like a telcos and enterprise are the two key uh, areas uh, that uh, Akrino is very focused on. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So as I mentioned on the previous slide, uh, Akrino had a successful release too on January 16, 2020. And uh, we have released multiple blueprints, which I'm going to talk about in the next few slides. And uh, we are very proud of this particular release because you know, it provided a solution for a multiple edge, uh, edge use cases. Uh, this is a really highly uh, wanted by the industry and people are already production deploying these use cases and blueprints. Um, which is adding a value to the industry. 
So let's go to the next slide. So I talked about the different blueprints and this particular slide provides a sketch of different blueprints. And Acrino groups the blueprints, what we call as the blueprint family, uh, because the different use cases using the same set of tools, we group them into a specific family and allowing them to not to duplicate with other blueprints. So the grouping allows us to you know, uh, support multiple use cases and uh, test cases within the same set of tool set. And the, what you see here is that you know, different uh, uh, grouping that is trying to address a, a specific area in the chart, that first slide that we saw with a different uh, deployment model. So we have blueprint for telco, we have blueprint for on-prem DC edge. Uh, we have the medium deployment uh, deployments. Also, we have the deployments that can actually support, you know, like uh, central offices and uh, telco edges. Then we also have a smaller, very, very smaller gateway uh, to support IoT and the universal CP as well. And uh, as I pointed out, you know, like uh, we talked about that, uh, you know, 14 plus blueprints. And when we talk about those different blueprints, you can see this by this picture that each blueprint is trying to address a different area of a deployment and uh, different use cases among them as well. So this, this chart clearly articulates, you know, like what that blueprint does. And uh, let's go to the next slide. So there are things that are, we are accomplishing beyond uh, this blueprint is there are, uh, you know, more enhancement to the blueprints and community lab validation. As I mentioned that, you know, like these blueprints are getting validated. Uh, so we work among the LFH projects and we also coordinate with the other open source project, either upstream or downstream to make sure that, you know, um, we work closely with them to understand the requirement and provide the, you know, solution for those communities. For example, uh, we had a CBA blueprint, which is actually providing solution for the over app softwares and forming a liaison with other communities, you know, both upstream and downstream helps this community not to, you know, duplicate what others are doing because industry resources are very limited. So we are very cautious about, you know, how we actually make progress with respect to the, uh, this community. So we closely work with upstream community for consuming the software that is already available. For example, Kubernetes is an example where we consume those, uh, you know, Kubernetes components with respect to integration of the blueprint. And we directly work with the Kubernetes community. So we have the upstream uh, subcommittee within the Crino project, which works with the upstream communities to ensure that we take the requirements to them and then have those implemented in the software. We contribute software, you know, the, the necessary patches and enhancement as well. Then we bring back for the, for the, the blueprint integration. For the downstream projects, they basically, you know, like consume the blueprint and they also provide, you know, like uh, the requirements, for example, Oran is an example, where it is in a downstream project which consumes actually a crino blueprint. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So here is a quick uh, picture of uh, release two and uh, people interested to actually learn more about uh, the release two blueprints. Uh, so if we go to lfh.org projects, Acrino release iPhone two, and uh, that takes you to that landing page where all the blueprints are listed. So if you click on that read more, then it takes you to a one pager. That one pager talks about, you know, what that blueprint does in terms of the components, in terms of architecture, in terms of APIs. And then there is a detailed uh, information on that as well. You can click onto it. It takes you to the, the code, the downloadables, the user documentation. So the community has done a great job in organizing the content around the blueprints. As you could see that the multiple blueprints, you know, we need to have a real clear documentation. So the community have really accomplished that. So you can actually read and if you're interested to try out that particular blueprint, you can actually download it and install in your environment. The user documentation explains, you know, what what is that community have validated it and how the blueprint actually works. So as long as you follow the steps, then it is readily uh, deployable in your environment. So let's go to the next slide. So what are the key takeaways from uh, uh, release two? is 
Akraino itself, you know, progressed as a holistic Akraino project. It progressed as a stage three project. So within LF Edge, uh, there is a multiple stages for the project within LF Edge. And uh, that stages allows the project to progress from uh, one level to another level. So Akraino was one of the founding project of uh, LF Edge and uh, it got progressed uh, last year to a stage three project, which is actually the top level. And uh, the project within Akraino, which is the blueprints and feature project, they usually get, you know, they have, we have a process within Akraino as well that allows the project to mature within the, uh, within the Akraino. So these are two different processes. Uh, so Akraino being in the stage three project, that means that it demonstrated the, you know, the values that it's bringing into the industry. And again, actually, the, the key benefit that the Crino community is delivering is a very uniformed uh, world, you know, framework for all those blueprints and the, the deployment models around them. And again, Release 2 has uh, 14 blueprints on, the, on different use cases, satisfying different use cases that are around IoT, enterprise, telcos, and the radio uh, edge, which is a RAN-related workloads as well. So what are we working on for release three? There are a couple of key areas that this community is focusing on in the release three. We are working on new blueprints. And again, these contribution are coming from different varieties of companies. I talked about, you know, 40 plus companies being involved in Akraino. And uh, there are AI based blueprints being worked, 5G Mac, Critical Edge and Micro Mac. And there are a few other connected cars and different other blueprints being worked for the release three. And we also focused on, you know, developing more automation in validating these blueprints. And that's what Tafi is going to talk about today. And uh, we are also working on API specs that the application to the Edge Cloud platform and Edge Cloud platform to the infrastructure or a third party cloud. Uh, that is that focus is also being actually looked at. And the API, you know, we, we are thinking to actually release a first specification, you know, like very soon within a month. And that is going to be very focused on developer-based APIs that what the platform has to support. So the community have done a great job in uh, building that framework. And again, we have been working with other communities like Etsy Mac is an example. We had a hackathon improving that, how we could actually integrate with Etsy Mac APIs. So that collaboration is in place and there's going to be more work coming in in the release three with respect to the APIs. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, yeah, hello. So I'm going to say a few words about this blueprint validation that that Connor was already talking about, and and sort of just to to motivate why we're having this. So I just sort of listed a, a few of the assumptions that an end user has. That so if I put myself in the shoes of an end user, I sort of I want to find out what we're going to have in release three to find out about it. And then understand how to take that. I mean, if if I find something that is interesting, I want to find out how it's in, how can I install it and how how can I use that. And then I want to have some kind of assurance that it actually is going to work the way it's advertised. So can I go to the next slide? So to to address these these issues, the Akraino uh, community has established a process. So first of all, as part of the, the release, we going, there's going to be this kind of uh, documentation. There's going to be this one slider and information about it. So we want to make it sort of easy to, for people to find relevant blueprints and find out what the blueprints are doing. And there's going to be a lot of material about that. And then uh, this, this issue about finding out how this, um, how the, uh, the, the blueprints actually work, there's this document is going to be available and the documentation is usually uh, it's a it's a big issue in open source projects so we actually have a, a process of, of reviewing all the documentation that goes into this release and then the, the third part is that after I download the code and, and actually run it then I, I want to sort of have some some kind of uh, trust that is actually going to work so for that reason we have this um, this blueprint validation tests, and we actually mandating for the next release that uh, all of the, uh, the the blueprints that have been part of the previous releases they they have to, to pass 
these tests. And if you go to the next page, um, there's the list of all of, so in this blueprint validation project, we have uh, sort of taken uh, a number of existing uh, testing projects and, and sort of packaged them uh, using the robot framework and, and, and sort of a made a framework that allows you to, to select with, uh, if you're the, from the point of view of, of a blueprint, it allows you to select which test you're going to run. And the uh, uh, assumption is that, that you will run, you, you will have a CI CD system and you're going to run the test in, in your CI CD system. And actually the, uh, in Akraino, we are, we are assuming that um, all, all of the, the, the blueprints are going to have a CI system and all of the logs from the installation will go uh, to a public location. So that's one of the things that we're going to review uh, for, for all of the blueprints that, that actually make sure that they act, at least they install uh, in the CI environment. And now from now on, we're going to, to sort of also check that, uh, uh, that um, uh, that they will pass all of these tests. And if you look at these tests, they sort of make sense. I mean, there's, we have a, like a Docker level. We have a lot of Kubernetes projects. So there's this Kubernetes conformance test. Uh, we have OpenStack tests like Tempest, for example, and then uh, operating system level tests, hardware level tests. But then also we have, a, already was mentioned, this um, uh, security to related tests. So there's this Docker bench, Cube Hunter, Linux, and Wolves are security tests. So uh, some of those are going to be mandatory tests, and, and then the security committee in, in Akraino is going to review those the, the results. The, in the final page of my presentation, if you go to the next page, uh, this is a picture of the of the basically a CI CI system. It, it's a little bit looks a little bit complicated, but the, the special thing about Akraino is that it's okay. It's for the edge, so we cannot assume that we have, you know, same shape, same size computers running the software. So all of the blueprints can basically specify what kind of hardware they're going to run. Our assumption is that when a blueprint comes in, they will bring in, they will have a lab and, and they will run um, the tests in their own lab. And then, but then like we said that there's, on the right hand side, you have this uh, yellow uh, cylinder, which says that the Nexus repo. So all of the results will be, will be copied to the, next, to the Nexus repo. And, and basically then in the bottom, you have this private, uh, uh, private lab. So it means that typically when you have a sort of a corporate lab, you're running it inside of a firewall and you have connections to outside. You can write, write something to an outside repository, but you cannot, you do not have, typically you do not, do not have access from the outside. There is also this case where um, in, in some of the, the labs, it's possible to run a, a Jenkins master in the Linux Foundation site, and then you can have a, 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 the, the Jenkins slave inside of your lab. And there's a couple of labs, like for example, this community lab, which is in the top, Linux Foundation community, community lab. And, and then of course, that makes it possible to sort of automate a lot of things. And one of the things that it allows you to automate is that we have this why to sort of make it easier to sort of, uh, first of all, to check what are the results of the, all of the tests, but then also in case you have this, um, uh, this uh, Jenkins slave running in your lab, it allows you to sort of uh, ask some tests to be run from the UI. So from the UI, repo and that the UI allows you to go and, and, and check that is running. But okay, that's 
all from my point from the Brooklyn validation project. Okay, so thank you, Tapio. And uh, there is a question on the call as well, uh, how to get in, uh, engaged with the Akraino community. So Akraino community has a set of calls and the, uh, you can join the mailing list as well, uh, where a lot of discussion happens. And each project within Akraino, that including the integration project, what we're calling as a blueprint, or a feature project which provides a building block for the blueprints. They also have the different calls, the PTLs, they organize these calls. Uh, so if we go to the Crino calendar, the link is available on this particular slide on the bottom of the slide. And if you go to the calendar, so you can see the different calls uh, being organized and uh, you can join those calls to understand about a specific project. Uh, but if you're interested to learn about the overall Akraino project and what progress, and these are all open discussion that we do on the TSE, and you can join there as well to learn what's happening with respect to the overall governance of this project. Uh, then the community calls are for open discussion, and any new blueprints which are brought to the community, they get reviewed in the community calls, and we take feedback from all the people in the community. And all the calls in Akraino, it's all open for all. You do not need to be a member of Akraino or LFAG to, uh, to join this call. It's open for everyone. So everyone is welcome to join. And again, from uh, the blueprints which are uh, already made into a release one and release two, uh, those are all available under LFAG.org uh, under Akraino. So you can see there is on a landing page where all the blueprints are listed, their documentation links are provided there. So if we go to wiki.acrino.org, that's where you know the information about all the project, all the documentation, and uh, everything that the documentation perspective, what we maintain with respect to this community, it's all listed out in the wiki. But again, as we stated, it's an open source community, everything is open, and they're all available under wiki.acrino.org as well. And we also record calls, uh, the TSC calls and project calls, and even the subcommittee calls. Uh, you can actually join, uh, you can listen to those calls because the recordings are also maintained actually in the wiki.acrino.org. Um, you can actually browse through those, those recordings if you're interested on a specific discussion with respect to the community. But again, actually the blueprints which are being developed uh, also, the which uh, which made into the release, the whole list is actually maintained in the blueprints, and you can see the link here uh, where the blueprints are also being listed there. So this is a full uh, logistics around what we do with respect to the community. Uh, I think the first way to get started is like you can join the community calls and join the mailing list. If you're interested in a project, go to the project directly. Then we can coordinate. But in case you come across any questions that uh, you could not uh, directly figure out. Uh, you can always send them an email to TSC, uh, as well as you can also send an email to me. I can connect you guys to uh, respective teams, or you know we can try to clarify a specific question. So right. with that, uh, back to Jill. Yeah. So we actually had another question come up on the chat window. Um, somebody is asking, can you please elaborate on how the collected results will be used, managed to generate a final report across various blueprints and technology stack? So the way we actually manage each blueprint uh, from a report uh, of what testing has been conducted and uh, uh, is really maintained on an XX repository within the Crino and all the logs from a CI CD testing of that specific blueprint is uploaded there. So during the release time frame, the TSCs and subcommittees, you know, they go and actually review those logs to ensure that that blueprint really demonstrated the installation of that particular blueprint as per the documentation they provided for that particular blueprint. And these logs are all maintained you know, across uh, several months and several weeks, uh, depending upon when the CI CD has been run for that particular blueprint. From a validation project, uh, uh, there is also additional information would be collected with respect to that project, like uh, as uh, Tapio was pointing out. Those logs are also maintained in the, like, an excess repository. But uh, from a release three perspective, we are trying to have those logs listed out in the portal as well. That is a work currently happening in the community. 
but uh, all the logs are actually maintained in the Nexus repository. Great, thank you. Um, and it looks like there were a handful of questions that popped up in the window earlier that were answered um, via typed response. So with that, um, I think we can close this out. I think there's one more slide after this. Yes, so thank you everybody for joining us today. We hope you found it useful. Um, the materials, the recording and the slides will be available shortly after uh, the close of the call today. So we'll uh, <clears throat> make sure that those links are, are made public and accessible. Um, and also just the next of our series um, is going to be on the edge with LF Edge. Um, focused on EdgeX Foundry. Um, our speakers are going to be Jim White and Calvin Smith, uh, both uh, community leads with the EdgeX Foundry project, focused on IoT. Um, so mark your calendars for that. And uh, thank you, everyone. We hope you stay safe and healthy. And thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.